Sean Hitchens joins me now in Studio Q. Hi. Hey, great to be here. Uh, glad to have you. Um, so, Sean, people on the radio can't see you. How would you describe your particular shade of hair? I would say I look like Tilda Swinton with a head of fire. That's how I would describe myself. <laughs> that is a, that is an apt description. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's, a, it's a beautiful head of hair. But there's a, there's a downside to this distinctive look. There are some stereotypes. Yeah, yeah. We get it a lot. There's, a, there's that... Um, that idea that redheads have terrible tempers. Okay. And uh, and the big one is this fascination with uh, does the rug match the drapes? That is the big one. And uh, it comes out out of nowhere. Strangers will walk up to you on the street and they will ask you flat out, you know, what color uh, is your pubic hair? And wow. it's it's such a it's a it's very interesting that there's this permission because you have uh, red hair uh, to do that. Huh. Uh, now, in doing some research for this, yeah, there's some bizarre stereotypes and kind of myths out there as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it goes. You know, there's weird things like Hitler banned marriages between two redheads. Did you read that? No. Yeah, he believed that two redheads would create deviant offspring, so it was banned. Uh, in ancient Egypt, ginger men were sacrificed and their ashes were sprinkled on fields to promote fertility. In wow. the medieval days, gingers were treated as witches or vampires, so they were often burnt at stakes, things like that. Now, uh, you call this gingerism. Gingerism, yeah, a prejudice against uh, gingers. It's a pun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so you talked about Hitler, you talked about ancient Egypt, <laughs> but you said in, even in present day, there's some prejudice still. Uh, well, yeah. If you like, the best example that I I look at is that Denmark banned uh, sperm donations from redheaded males. A redhead cannot donate his semen to the infertile people of the Danish realm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Which hits home because I was. <laughs> <laughs> you needed fifty bucks or yeah. something. <laughs> well, I was a sperm donor. Oh, okay. So to a lesbian couple, when this happened, oh, and okay. So, well, that's a very real thing. So it it's sort of like you know, as a gay man, I was being discriminated against because I couldn't use a clinic here, and at the same time, if I was in Denmark, I couldn't use a clinic there because, uh, uh, well. And is that because they they really think there's some like deviant gene in there or something? No, I think in Denmark there there was something ridiculous like 70 liters of of red-headed sperm that they could not give away. And so they were stockpiled and so they just stopped. So it's it's absurd. So Wow. Yeah. Uh and you've set up Ginger Pride marches in well, Edinburgh, Scotland. Yes, it's which started off as a joke. So this is how this started. Uh, Glenn Sumi, who I think was here a couple weeks ago uh, from Now Magazine. Yes. Uh, we were doing an interview, and I had done just done the festival over there in 2011, and I bombed. And so I came back, and I was like sort of licking my wounds, and Glenn said, you know, will you ever do this again? And I said, Glenn, the only way I'll ever go back is if I get to do a ginger pride march. And he put it in the article, and then the next year I got an offer to go back, and so I petitioned the Edinburgh Council just as sort of a joke, saying, I'm going to do this ginger pride rally. And, and so two weeks later, I get uh, uh, the notice saying, it's accepted. You can do it. And I tweet it. Oh, something. I was in the Eaton Center. Walking through, I was like, I just got permission from the Edinburgh Council to do a ginger pride march. And that tweet went viral. Huh. And by the time I got home, uh, it, uh, there was an article in the BBC. I think it was the BBC, or maybe it was uh, some some one of those one of the pat papers over there. Is hundreds of papers, but something that said militant ginger poet <laughs> <laughs> to do a, a pride march. And and by the time I actually arrived in Scotland, I went to the Virgin Mobile to get a new SIM card, and <laughs> the guy who was doing it looked at me and said, "You have the ginger who's come here to save the other gingers." And I, and I said, how do you know that? And he opened up the paper, and there was my photo in it, and I knew I was in trouble. I, I knew at this point. Uh, so, so basically, it was a full week of me not sleeping because I thought, I'm going to be, they're going to kick me out of this country. They're go they're, they're, so I had no sleep. And so I arrive on the day, and there's paparazzi, wow. like full-on paparazzi, and, uh, and nobody's there. And I'm there. <laughs> it's just me. It's just me and some sticks with signs that say it gets redder. And, they, and so I was there going, oh, wow, this is this is how it's going to go down. This is how I'll be immortalized as the, the, one, the one guy, the one uh, parade, a one man parade. But then I turn around and all I see are crowds like like 
gingers everywhere just coming. And I was, it was at the last minute. And we ended up marching uh, all the way to the Royal Mile. Uh, it just hundreds of gingers huh. with the signs. And it amassed the most media attention in the 70-year history of the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. There was a point where I was dragged to BBC, uh, the BBC studio in Scotland, and they just put, they sat me down like this, and they told me to stare at like a styrofoam cup on a camera. And I'm doing like, I have the ear monitor in, and I'm just talking like, blah, blah, blah. I haven't slept. I'm wearing like a $10 H&M hoodie. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and then they go, okay, great, Sean. That, uh, that went to 5 million people. And I was like, okay, great. Wow. And, and then they're like, can you do another one? I was like, sure. And then I'm like sitting there, like just not making any sense. I'm making up statistics. Uh, and, <laughs> and they go, great. That went to 19 million people. And then they said, can you do one more? And I said, okay, great. Uh, and so I do one more. I'm talking about like my favorite types of cheese. And at this point, I'm like, yeah, I love the cheese here. It's great. I'm delirious. And the guy, it was BBC World Service and it went to 190 million people. Wow. So I understand you, you started this thing kind of as a joke. Yeah. But then you were surrounded by crowds. Yeah. Right. And, and you get all this media attention. Yeah. What did you learn from the different participants in the march? Well, I'm a bit, I'm very irreverent. Mm -hmm. uh, that's who I am. And there, there's always a turning point when you go, oh, this is not a joke anymore. <laughs> oh, this means something. And, and what happened, uh, it was, there were confessionals. Like uh, people in, in the UK, having red hair uh, means something very different here. The word ginger over there means something very different. Um, and, and, and people are brutalized. Like they're, they're, they're attacked, uh, they're bullied. Uh, and you know, it's there's a there's a real edge to it. Um, so to hear people, uh, like uh, people would come to my show, and after, like grown men would come up to me cr crying and saying, you know, thank you so much for what you did. I don't know if you understand what you did, but but it, you know, your show's great, but this was better. <laughs> this was, you know, uh, to have that sort of um, that confession. Uh, you know, that's when I realized, uh oh, hmm. you know, and that's when I became a ginger spokesperson for a bit. And, and that was a whole different hat. That was a year. <laughs> How did it feel for you to kind of stumble upon being a spokesperson for, uh, it, it felt, it felt really good. I, it felt, you know, I enjoyed it. Uh, it got weird when I started to be called in for like scientific you know, to comment on scientific research because there are, there are lies, there's damned lies, and then there are ginger statistics, and these studies that come out are, are, are just ridiculous. So, you know, I'd be phoned in, uh, someone would phone me, I would come here actually, and, and do a radio interview for something like uh, studies about prostate cancer and, and, and ginger men, you know, uh, just, you know, that's when I got, oh gosh, I shouldn't be a little, doing this. Yeah, out of my depths yeah. here. Yeah, yeah I, I've been doing a show about my, yeah, about masturbation for, you know, a year or so. <laughs> okay, I want to ask you about some, some celebrity redheads. Yeah. Uh, tell me if these people have helped or hindered the cause. Okay. Julianne Moore. Uh, helped. Ed Sheeran. Helped. Nico Case. Mm, uh, kind of yeah. in the middle. <laughs> Our director <laughs> doesn't like that. Uh, my, uh, one of my personal favorites, Bonnie Raitt. Yes. Huge. Huge, but I uh, I don't know if a, a direct... Uh, yeah, I, I'll, She I'll doesn't direct. count. She, well, she doesn't count. Why? I don't know. I don't know. A little, little brownish. A little, a little bit. brownish. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so it, it's been announced now that in the UK they're going to get a full Ginger Pride Festival. Yeah. Is that something you would welcome? Yes, because, uh, you know, when I tried to, the next year when I tried to do it again, I felt this pressure. I was like, oh my gosh, I really got to save these gingers. I got to do it. And so I felt this, like, uh, that this, uh, I had created something and so I had to keep it going. And, you know, the reality of, of the Ginger Pride uh, walk was that it was lightning. You know, I spent 50 pounds on fluorescent vests and some sticks. And to go and to repeat that would have cost 10 to 20,000 pounds. Uh, to have the same uh, effect. So I, I'm very happy that someone's taking on the responsibility and caring that I would love to attend. You know, there are other redheaded festivals um, across, the, across the world now. Mm -hmm. uh, the one in Breda, there's the one in the UK, there's the one in Chicago that took place uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, and there's the great one in Cork, Ireland. And uh, finally, what about Canada? Canada. 
Yeah, I, I do. I do. I think we necessarily need a ginger pride march. Maybe not. I don't think we're discriminated against uh, here. Um, I, I mean, we're bullied, but, but yeah. Yeah, may, I do I think we need a Pride March? No. Do I think we need a Festival of Gingers? Yes. Because it would be fun. It would be fun. It would be fun. And it needs to be a place like in Cape Breton or Halifax or, or uh, somewhere where it's, uh, there's a lot of redheads. I think Simply Red should headline. Yes. That's, that's my vote. Thanks okay. for coming in, Sean. <laughs> Thanks so much.